Okie dokie. Well, hello again, Jessica. How are you? Hello. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. What about you? Great, great, great. Everything is great, you know, um, just staying inside and not trying to catch COVID. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to, you know, first congratulate you on on the incredible run you had with Fred Art. It was, mm. it, it's it, it's an amazing film. I'm, I'm so happy that I got to see it when you were in LA and we got to meet. Um, I was really looking forward to watching the film because, you know, we just, you know, as, as, as Haitians, we don't really have, you know, that many uh, uh, films about Haitian cinema in mm -hmm. comparison to the rest of the, the cinematic universe. So it's just, you know, it's a great, great thing that, you, that you've that you accomplished with the film. And I just mm -hmm. want to congratulate you personally and say that first. But, you yeah, know, you can, you. you can tell us a little bit about how you're doing and, um, you know, where you're at and, you know. <laughs> well, I'm fine right now. I mean, it, it has been a very, a very hectic lately. Um, of course, because of um, everything that, mostly because of the film right now, because, well, mm -hmm. most of my life is about that, um, is about following the film wherever it takes us, you know. So mm -hmm. um, lately it has been that and dealing also with COVID, like you said, you know, traveling mm -hmm. issues, visa issues, because I have a Haitian mm -hmm. passport. So my, 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 lately my, my life has been that. So this is the first time that I'm actually kind of slowing down and, and just mm -hmm. and just relaxing. Um, I had to cancel a couple of things because I realized that, I mean, this can go on forever if you don't, you right, don't put, right. uh, put some type of boundaries to it. And, and because, I mean, humanly, um, there is certain, yeah, there is certain needs that we have, you know, in order for us to stay um grounded and so so right. i i made a few choices for that and but we 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 we're gonna start back again um i think I'm, I'm going to serbia at the end of this month and i'm gonna meet with probably one of the director that i love the most on this planet um Ooh, if, you gotta if, tell us <laughs> I don't know if, I mean, you got, you, you, the name might not ring a bell, but he is, he made a film that actually really changed the way I saw cinema for myself mm. as a director. You know, there's, there's the cinephile. I don't know how to say that in English. Um, you know, uh, cinephile, cinephile. Cinephile. And there's, yeah. you know, what inspires you as a cinephile, as a human, and then what inspires mm -hmm. you as a director, like you might know also. And this guy really, um, Emir Kustoika um, directed a film called Underground. And mm -hmm. I think he is probably the only director that win two Palme d'Or, if I'm not mistaken. If he's wow. not the only one, then there's, there are two of them only. And, mm -hmm. and, and I watched Underground while I was studying um, back in Paris in 2011. It's an mm -hmm. almost three hour film and it's just a, a, an amazing um, work of art and also an amazing work on human and, and, and our relationship with politics and, and social, you know, the choices that they make um, for us that affect mm -hmm. our lives, but that we easily, you know, fall into, into, into it without questioning, without fighting, without, because they custom it in such a way for you to, to mm -hmm. see that such a, a wonderful thing that is happening. You know, it's, it's, it's like they create this fairy tale, of, you know, to show you that the world or the country that you're living in, everything is working well, We're, we are working for you, you know? You can just right, right. stay in the corner and wait for your fate. <laughs> and, and, and I think it was amazing because the way he, he, did, he made the film was not, a, it, it was not dramatic. You know, it was mm -hmm. he played with humor a certain way that is very uncommon. So, so, um, so when I watched that, I realized that you can talk about politics. You can talk about very important matter actually, and choose a, a certain way. You know, to construct to construct it in right. and and still seeing on the human understanding of it instead of you know, giving all the space in your film to the institution or the government or you see what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's a great segue into the, the first question I have for you, um, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is basically, you know, how was the genesis, uh, you know, of 
the Freda story. How did it come to you? And when did you first begin um, thinking about making a film about the story? I think it's, I think, it, first of all, it, it's like I, like I grew up, you know, thinking that I'm gonna become a filmmaker. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it was never about that. It's not, it's not the career that lead me to this, to tell this story or that it's the other way around. It's the desire to, to say certain things that led me to, to go to this or that, you know, whether it's writing a piece of whatever or uh, writing a song or a book, whatever it is, it's just in the idea of me as a human being being confronted so many times, you know, like a lot of us or all of us with certain question that, that seems unanswered, unanswerable. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. even know if that's a word, but it's like sometimes it, it seems so chaotic in your mind. It seems so chaotic everywhere. And it feels like if you put everything in a box or in a piece of paper or, in, or on the screen of something and, and you, you know, it makes you have a certain sensation of control, if I can say it like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think by, you know, when you grow up in Haiti, you you lose control all the time okay because um and it's evident of course as human we don't have control on everything but some society make you face this powerlessness you know uh, more often than others mm -hmm. and in haiti mm -hmm. the sensation of feeling powerless is something that that is you know a constant and really heavy and i think as a kid growing up uh, whether it's within my family or within the society that i was um, I was I was um, growing. I I felt powerless constantly, and so at some point I I started to play in some movies mostly for money, um, <laughs> and because uh, Richard Senegal is is the first director, we gave me the opportunity to to do so. So it was more job because I never thought that we could make film that would go you know that I, that would interest anyone because we were. Right absorbed by especially American cinema in Haiti. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. talking about the regular TV, you know, the, the national TV televisions, not, not the people that has access to cable and everything. Mm -hmm. But from where I come from, because I come from a precarious neighborhood, I only had access to the few, you know, um, um, TV films channel that, that, that was yeah. available. And then, yeah. so you would watch American films and you see, it looks expensive, you know, it smells expensive, <laughs> everything about it is mm -hmm. expensive. So you cannot imagine film being something that could be accessible to someone like you. So mm -hmm. making film in Haiti was the first step toward even thinking about that, you know? And then mm -hmm. slowly I started to take it a bit seriously because I enjoyed um, being part of a storytelling moment. and. And especially the film that I made with Risha uh, Senegal in Alon today was really author movie. You know, when you think about it, because they were treat they were talking about social um, 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 situations or social um, problematic in Haiti, and 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 it was exciting to, or even curious, let's say curious, to see how people would react to that. You know, how people would right. dive right. in them and feel connected and be like. Oh, no, it's like it's like it's happening to them. It's like they're gonna right, die. Right. Mm -hmm. And and this is a, you know and I agree and I completely one hundred percent agree. And which is why I think that more Haitian filmmakers should you know begin to want to shoot more in Haiti because not only does it add to the authenticity that was well versed throughout your film because it felt very real. It felt like I was there with the characters when, when they were you know having an issue with you know like a, a family member or. Um, when they were trying to just kind of like find their own way, you know, within the life, the life that they had in Haiti. Mm -hmm. I think that shooting in Haiti ultimately is, is one of the things that grants the film a level of um, just, uh, you know, like, you know how the French like to say cinema verite, you know, it gives it, it gives it that level of, 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 of uh, you know, the dynamic. That is just, yeah. 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 So, um, and, and, and that, that, that actually will take us into our next question, which is, you know, the logistics of the film, you know, I, I know that when I went to the screening, you talked a little bit about how, um, the, you know, there were certain situations where you had to like go above and beyond to continue shooting um, mm -hmm. certain scenes and whatnot. How did, how did the 
overall, you know, state of Haiti affect, you know, you know, the, the production that you had while you were shooting in Haiti? It affected everything, to be honest. You know, it affected even the perception of people that you would ask for money outside of Haiti and that, you know, they would be like, you'll never be able to make that film uh, or a technician that you're trying to get on board, you know, that, that, that would say, no, I'm not coming without an insurance. I'm not coming without this, that. Mm -hmm. And so from that to the actual um, 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 filming process within the country, within Port-au-Prince to be specific, because the, the poison or let's say the, the real problem is within Port-au-Prince mostly. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. the other areas doesn't have their problem, but the insecurity issue, right. you know, the kidnapping and stuff like that, it's really within the capital. And mm -hmm. outside of the capital, it's 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 more livable if mm -hmm. secure, you know, in the insecurity yeah. part of it. So yeah. so we thought a lot about going outside of Butter Prince. You know, we thought about going to Jack Mail, which is in the south of uh, of of the capital. Mm -hmm. We we thought about going to the north also, but at the same time, Fred, I was telling a story that has to be called <laughs> within the in capital and. Somehow it was really hard to explain because I'm lost outside of but because I grew up in Port Prince and I was trying right. to. This film is a lot, you know, my life is a lot of a canva for this film. So I felt like, like when I go to Jacques Mel, even though I spend a lot of time in Jacques Mel, I, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I, I, mm. I you know, you, 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 you have um, repair, if I can say it like that, but mm -hmm. they're not childhood ones or you know, grounded, connected yeah. ones because you didn't right, grow right. up there. Right. So I would, got, I would get lost and I'm like, this cannot happen because if I'm lost, then I cannot direct this thing. And so, mm -hmm. so we stayed in Puerto Prince even though we knew that it, it, would have been, it, it was a complicated choice. Mm -hmm. And even today, I think I get anxiety just thinking about it because I, when I was doing it, of course, you know, it's like if, you, if you're wounded, you know, right away you don't feel it because you're in the heat of the thing and you just, mm -hmm. just Adrenaline on, keep pushing and exactly that. so mm -hmm. this is what was happening i was in that state of uh, complete it's like this film has to be done right now and i could not i cannot even explain because it was how it was in the in my mind and luckily i had people that that were crazy crazier than me to say okay let's you know let's try yeah. this but it's a mix of being aware of, of the dangers and everything, but at the same time, doing what you have to do. You know, when they say do it scared, mm -hmm, it's kind of mm -hmm. that, it's kind of that, but doing it scared also means that you're aware of what, 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 what's going on. You know, it doesn't mean that you, you reject or you, you, you pretend that everything is fine. So we kind of right, built, right, um, right our team and the way right. of you know that we work in a way for us to feel safe with each other even the people that i would choose to be part of the team was in that state of mind also if i feel like someone can be um you know doesn't have discipline because i know a lot of them most of them i've grew up with them and i've worked with them on different projects so so i know most of people that works in the you know in the cinema or theater or any artistic right, right. So even the your behavior was amazing. That's, you know? that's because you had to. You have a bunch that's, of people that's, to that's protect. A, you know, right, right. And you, you know, as the director, you're kind of captain of the ship. You know, on 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 set. Yeah. So everybody's kind of like looking to towards you for guidance in every single aspect that has to do with the set. So mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's an amazing. Uh, point that you pointed out there when you know having that state of mind kind of like mm -hmm. it's kind of, almost kind of like a soldier being in war kind of just you know yeah. having to get the mission done and you know pushing through mm -hmm. to, to 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 get the film made and I think that's mm -hmm. that's a, that's an incredible trait that all, you know all great filmmakers you know should have you know within within their DNA as, as storytellers um, yeah as human and, you know, also <laughs> because right 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 I, I, I never disconnect our behaviors as you know as human to what we're doing as work, mm -hmm. you know, because work, mm -hmm. of course, is an extension of who we are and what we who we choose to be. So yeah, I completely agree with you. Is is you need mm -hmm. to be aware. You cannot die. You cannot drag people into your stuff without, you know, being clear. Being knowledgeable. About, 
you know <laughs> yeah but yeah. how you're gonna manage it mm -hmm. For, for your set, for your set, and I, I know you, you said a little bit about how you knew a lot of the the, the, the people around with uh, within the Haitian mm -hmm. cinema industry. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the casting uh, going, you know, you had great, great, you know, you know, casting uh, uh, characters yeah. for, for some of the roles. And I mean, mm -hmm. particularly, uh, I was very impressed with, you know, Freda and um, her mm -hmm. mother. I thought that mm -hmm. their relationship was something that was, you know, absolutely beautiful to see, mm -hmm. you know, on, on, on the big screen. And I wanted you to talk about your casting process for both of those roles. Well, there's no process about that. Oh, if I, if I can call it a process, um, to be honest, it's, uh, I made a lot of mistakes during this, that casting process because at first I, I thought that I should choose people that I love, I would love to see on screen, you know, that I would love to work with, you know, friends, people that will make me feel safe also as a director, since it, it was my first film, all those wrong reasons, because yeah, they, it's important to feel safe, but you create the safety. You don't choose people. You don't choose people thinking that they're going to create safety for you. It doesn't make any sense. And, and also, um, so I, I, I was supposed to play, I, you know, I cast several people around the fact that I'm playing and then, mm -hmm. on, 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 you know, um, while working on that, I, I, I lost one of the main person that I choose because she, something happened to her, something personal happened to her. And then, and then when she, when I lost her, it's, I, I started to think differently and I'm like this this you I cannot why why did I lose because I never think that things are <laughs> I know it sounds cliche but it's 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 like when you're on a bad day you know everything you touch burns you and and mm -hmm. so for me it's like when you're on you're you're taking a decision that is not the right one mm -hmm. there's there's other you know things within you that, that, that has, it can affect as well exactly and 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 so I was pushing for that casting, but something inside of me knew it wasn't. And so mm -hmm. this part inside of me that that was tr saying staying true to the to the process was kind of kicking in all the time, you know. And then so when mm -hmm. this happened with her, I started really to think I'm like, there's something that I need to reconsider. This is not. This should not be like that. This should not be this way. So mm -hmm. I thought about it. I thought about it a lot. So I started to have like you anxiety I could not sleep anymore because I knew we were you know marching toward the the time of filming and I and now I know that I have to change casting and I know that I'm not gonna push the the production because it's not possible we only had this window mm -hmm. and we had to do it now mm -hmm. and so slowly but but surely at some point a week before uh production I found people that made me safe enough, you know, to let go of everyone that was on the project before. And it's kind of a danger, it, it's kind of dangerous because it's, it's, it doesn't work that way all the time. You, know, right, you cannot right. wait for that late. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you cannot wait for that late. But at the same time, there's this magical moment where you are so mm -hmm. focused, you know, on everything that you're doing. And yeah, it does take like one minute for you to figure it out. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, yeah, all absolutely. your energy for like a good long period of time, all your energy is like, and then focused on that on that exactly. one task, and, mm -hmm. and then it, it started to be obsessive. So everything you look become a subject of you know your obsession, mm -hmm. and then and I think also it's you know you allow yourself all the process that is possible for what you're doing, whether mm -hmm. you have plenty of time to do a huge casting, you know, where you meet 600 people or, mm -hmm. and I was trying to avoid actors also for Freda because mm -hmm. I felt like this is not the way I should, you know, I should go for this type of film that I was trying to mm -hmm. make. Each project has their own, of course, casting yeah, necessity yeah. and, you know, process. And also you also, like we were saying, you know, as human mm -hmm. is yeah. how you, you also de de define how you approach thing, and mm -hmm. yeah, that was my way. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, it, the, the, you know, the 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 casting I think was absolutely superb. I mean, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, great. It was the, the the performances were so top notch, and as someone mm -hmm. who 
again, how I mentioned, we don't really get a chance to see, you know, Haitian actors on, on the big mm -hmm. screen like that. I think mm -hmm. it's, it was, I, I found it very healing almost and in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in kind of like, you know, watching these characters because these stories have not been told, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of like what, what I want to ask about you now is like, how do you see the impact of, of Frida and how it affects the, the future of Haitian cinema, you know, going mm -hmm. forward? Because I think this film is, is kind of, at a the, the timing of it is, I think, something mm -hmm. that is very, very important. You know, with mm -hmm. considering all things that's happening in Haiti, um, as well as you know the situations you know at the border here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I think the timing of this film is just you know, it's it's almost serendipitous to say the least. But you know, I, I wanted to see your 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 thoughts on that and how you see the impact mm -hmm. of the film. You know, it's it's a very complicated thing uh, thing to think about. You know, the impact of your work or any work for that matter, especially artistic work, because it, it has been questioned so many times. You know, what is the use of of making films? You know, of creating, mm -hmm. um, especially mm -hmm. in times of crisis, or especially about crisis or on crisis. And is it more to just okay, show this is what's happening, or can it really have? can really affect, you know, um, the perception. I think, I think I can say from the conversation that I had during all the premieres that I've done with the film, all the screenings that I've been through, all the conversation that I had, that of course it changed perception. And a lot of big countries understood that like, for, for decades before us, because like, for example, you see the US, the way their culture is imposed, you know, around the world is through mm -hmm. art. It's mm -hmm. not through them traveling, because I don't think they are that big travelers from what I understand. <laughs> it's, it's from the, what they're sending and the power that they have to control what they're sending out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you can see that these, this American dream thing was sold through films, you know? It's, it's film that shows that, oh, uh, oh, in America, you can do everything, you know? In America, we are superheroes. Mm -hmm. Every time that there is a big problem in the world, we resolve it within America, you know? <laughs> like, we are, yeah. we are, we are, we are, we are. And I think, yes, it's, it's limitless what we can create in terms of narrative and perception for ourselves and for ourselves first, because an American believe in the American dream. He might right. not leave it. He might not, you know, he's not probably he not living it, right it. But he believes that one day. Yeah. And then, and then also when he look at someone, you know, and struggling and, and getting there, he's like, yeah, he's rooting because he knows that this dream is accessible to him too. So. Mm -hmm. So for me to create that perception on ourselves, you know, to change the way we see ourselves as a nation, of course, can have a huge impact on how we approach everything, every situation, mm -hmm. every problem, and how the diaspora also see us. Because mm -hmm. you cannot exist only through news that people are getting from you. This is not possible. Yeah. It, yeah. It, nobody can exist like that, you know? And it's a fight. And you need to fight to exist your way, your mm -hmm. way within yourself, within the country and your way from the outside. So how people mm -hmm. are looking at you. And I think the film is not traveling as I wish it could. <laughs> but I think I'm mm -hmm. too, maybe I'm too, I have to slow down. <laughs> but I think I can't wait. And especially everywhere I go, I said, you know is there can they check in the room if my people are there <laughs> and I'm always in possession of that in mm. in France in, in France for example it was not taken very well because you know they have this thing with community they're always they're scared mm -hmm. of it they, they, they are mm -hmm. extremely scared of it so so when you ask for your people they feel like you're asking for black people which means that you don't want them blah 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 and mm -hmm. it's a lot of things which is not the case at all <laughs> at all but i don't care that's mm. their problem to resolve <laughs> so, right right but me every time i go i said did you target my people and i and i and i do it on purpose i think you know that's what i said my people i said oh there's no haitian i said yeah but you found my people it's still my people so i want to see my mm -hmm. people in the room mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and i even you know um, really put pressure for them to hire 
uh, black um, uh, press, uh, what do you say, that press attaché, attaché press? Uh, um, uh, like press attendants or um, exactly. journalists? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, press, you know, people that organizes um, meeting with journalists and everything. So oh, in yes, France, yes, like more public uh -huh. relations and press. Public yeah. relations, exactly. So that we can, I, I, you know, we organized like a big screening that was only, but mostly, for the community in France, you know, for the black mm -hmm. uh, community in France, because I said, mm -hmm. I've been to Cannes, I've been to a lot of festivals. And most of the time, I'm often the only black person in the room. And I, I want you to be the only way. <laughs> I think it's only fair mm -hmm. because it's a film mm -hmm. about anything. About like, the, yeah. You know, they would go like, I don't see color. I said, I, I want you to see color because I'm a black woman. And I made a film right. with black people and I need black people to see it. Like I want also the rest of the world to see it but I right, made a right. black film. <laughs> and I said, right, right, right. So it's, 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 it, it was not confusing for me at all, but it was confusing for some of them because it's hard. And, and, and it makes you realize that it's something that has not been done often enough. Yeah, you know, yeah. Especially in, in, in Europe, especially in France, for example, where, mm -hmm. where there's like very few film from the you know from the Caribbean that has been in movie theaters and, and for so mm -hmm. long and in Creole and and so close to their story too you know because they love mm -hmm. it but when it's like mm -hmm. a bit far you know from mm -hmm. their own story so so I think it's just it, it needs to be more of that of course you know it's it, it cannot be different it's just is I think also there's a work that has to be done in terms of how professional right. we do things also because there's a lot of things that mm -hmm. has that is being done in haiti right now mm -hmm. a lot you know there's like they're on youtube they're all over but mm -hmm. it's still something that you know for for them for the country it, it, or for the diaspora that is interested in it but it still cannot travel so i think we need to find a way to make this travel yeah. whether to big festival but just traveling you know yeah. even on youtube yeah, to make sure that more people yeah, more see content more, people... more quality content you know yeah and, and absolutely absolutely it's not funny <laughs> doesn't mean that it's not you know it's a, but it's of a certain standard and it's exactly. a it's of a standard that can be you know um you know widely viewed in a manner that you know affects mm -hmm. us as a culture i think i and I, mm -hmm. I, I i completely i completely agree with that which mm -hmm. you know which makes me want to ask you know like you know you said that you know <laughs> most of the time while you were doing these big screenings um mm. you're like you feel as if like you're the only you know black person there sometimes and you know mr godfather himself uh francis Ford Coppola, <laughs> uh, um decided to become you know he decided to support the project and become an executive producer you know that's a yes. you know ma major major thing i mean everybody you know obviously yes. knows the godfather films and um uh, and, and what the you know his his career has been like it's it's he's a tremendous filmmaker can you talk a little bit about yes. how that that came to be and you know how did how, how did you feel when you even first got the news that that he you know wanted to come on board i think first of all i even when he wanted to watch the film i i, I was not even sure that i wanted him to watch the film because really <laughs> it, was, it was because i mean uh, of course uh, you, you you say you you don't really care about people's opinion which is not true by the way well, okay. or maybe partly true, but I don't think it's true. I think it matters. But you, of course you can identify when it matters more or not. But for him, I knew for sure that his opinion would matter too much. Too much in the sense that it can destroy me because mm -hmm. he, he had no reason to lie. He had no reason to pretend to, you know, to be polite because he doesn't even know me. He doesn't. So, so I knew that his, you know, answer to that will be truthful. And mm -hmm. from someone that has so much experience, and he's also a cinephile, like he's also, mm -hmm. uh, yes, one of the greatest directors alive, but he's a cinephile. So he's someone that re really watched a lot, a lot of films. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's extremely scary to show some show your work to someone that you know I've seen thousands and mm -hmm. made several, you know, that were considered and everything. So this person 
So I, I, I spent a, a whole night not being able to live with myself because I was tortured. <laughs> yeah, a whole night. From the moment he said he agrees to watch the film and send, you know, his um, point of view or uh, remarks or, you know, from mm-hmm. this moment on when he said that I, I couldn't be with myself, I'm like, this guy's going to destroy me. This guy's going to say that. <laughs> He's going to say that. What the hell, you know, why are you wasting my time with this <laughs> crap? And, and I'll never be able to make films again because, I'll, I, you know, the imposter syndrome syndrome is already there in yeah, everybody that's yeah. getting. So and to have someone that you know that knows this shit to crush you, mm-hmm. like, how do you, probably I would, I would have done it, but probably it would have taken me years or I don't know. But anyway, mm-hmm. I was too scared of the, the impact of that. But when I received um, his email, I called someone and I think I started, I said, I'm going to read something to you and then I'm going to tell you who wrote it. So I started to, and I was crying. I was crying. But you see the ugly cry, you know, when women cry and they're trying to say something, (laughs) but you cannot understand any words of it. You know, it's Mm -hmm. it's all over the place though. So I composed myself and I started to say every word, like, like I was like I wanted to drink them <laughs> like I really wanted to tap to them on you know I wanted the word to, to come mm-hmm. in and leave me forever because it was beyond the fact that he loved the film it's something that he said that is not a pu- that was not published that he said you know talking about he doesn't understand why we are still being punished for you know for to have, because we have made the most, you know, the only successful um, uh, slave rebellion in history. And mm-hmm. when he said that, it's just, it, you know, it gathers everything in your mm-hmm. head as Haitian, you know, and you're like, why the hell is it hell for us here? You know, it's like, mm-hmm. what have we done to humanity? And, 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 you know, how can you be the leader in the most important path that humanity needed to take more than 200 years ago, you were the leader of that. You helped other countries around you, you know, to profoundly fight for for their humanity. And, Mm -hmm. And then yet you are there being treated that way. And yet you are there. So it was just too much for me. And I, I think it was that also, because the mm-hmm. obsession of, like we were saying, for people to see us as we are, as we are, as we know that we are, but that everybody refused to see because, because we're not custom the way they want to see us. You know, we, are, we don't have big whatever. We don't have, mm-hmm. it's not a big country. We don't have big tourists, whatever. So we don't have all the, the elements that they need to define you know, us as right, a big but, country. Yeah, and and I and I think I think those things, you know, they very much hinder the 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 perception, you know, of the Haitian culture. And mm-hmm. um, you know, I think you know, like you said, Mr. Coppola is a cinephile. He's someone who's very extremely intelligent when it comes to films. And I think he mm-hmm. saw what 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 you know most people saw when they see the film is that there's something very special with Frida, um, and that um, it's 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 something that touches you in a manner that forces you to, to see the humanity that you're describing of, of these people that are experiencing this 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 um, this country um, in Haiti and um, the, the 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 punishment and, and you know as, as as Haitians we have all you know when we're, it's something that we learn when we're young you know about the revolution how you know we were the first to you know defeat you know our oppressors you know through war and I think that while we don't have you know the the, the the tall buildings or the the vast highways or whatnot. Mm-hmm. I think what we have um, are the intangibles, which is a, a a a great pride because you know every single time that I've been to Haiti, I I, I experience a level of of pride and love that I can't find anywhere else on this planet. Mm-hmm. I don't believe, mm-hmm. um, and and it's it's something that I think uh, it lives in every single uh, person. Um, uh, that that has that Haitian ancestry, um, and not and not just in, in in the Haitian culture, but also um, widely with the African culture as well. You know, through the diaspora or um, 
you know, people living around the world, because you can find Haitians anywhere, <laughs> you know, nowadays. So um, I think it's 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 a, it's a very very important thing you know, for him to come on and you know I can't imagine the overwhelming sensation <laughs> that it must was. have been to, it to, was. To, to to experience that. I mean, but uh, it it, it's it, I I I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say when, when that news came we. We all cheered very, very loudly. Uh, I, I, was, I was, I was so happy for you um, to, 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 to have that. And then, you but know, for it was, us, it's, it's. Yeah. The thing is, the thing is, unfor- I don't, I, I don't want to say unfortunate because I don't want to put uh, a negative vibe on this, but it's, it's to be seen. You need people that other people want to see, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. of course, Frida would have exist without him mentioning and being on board like that. But the fact that he understood that he's, you know, uh, uh, the fact that other people appreciate his work so, you know, immensely. And he understood that this can be used to bring light on something that he didn't have to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I remember mm-hmm. when we didn't qualify to continue the race in the Oscar, I wrote him and I said, I'm really sorry, you know? Um, I said, I, well, I think we did everything that we could. And I said, I hope that you didn't feel like, you know, that you've wasted your time or something, you know? And then he said, I'm just proud. What are you talking about? And and oh, wow. so, wow. so all this, um, it's not me. It's mm-hmm. a country because mm-hmm. Freda is about us. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I can mm-hmm. never take that for me because if you see the film, you understand that, you know, it's, you have a noise? Is that okay? Yeah, I think that, I think can that's you hear my me? AC. Yeah, I can hear <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah that's okay. my AC that just, yeah, my heat just turned on. <laughs> but, Every, every time I hear something, it's literally like I feel like I've heard it about Haiti and that. Mm-hmm. Because if you see the film, you, you know that the film is about that. You know, you yeah. know that, that the film is about a whole nation and, and people that mm-hmm. we don't usually see on screen and that mm-hmm. we don't have access to. And, and yeah, so, so I... I just, I just wish that that we can continue and that we can make more of it. You know, in that, we need more of it. Actually, um, yeah, we, we 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 need a I, lot I of it. <laughs> we need we, we need do, to be tired of and ourselves. It's, and it's coming. <laughs> and it's coming. It is. It's coming. It I is. Think there's gonna be, I think there's going to be a nice wave. Um, you know, this the, this is this is I think one of the the, the beginnings, the very beginnings of, of what's. It has be. to be. Someone was yeah, telling me. it has me, to be. Oh, I hope. It's not a one-time thing. I said, what are you telling? Like, why are you telling me that? You need to say it's not going to be a one-night and you're going to make your film. Right, right. Because also we have our little problem of socialization. We always think that someone will, you know? And I think Mm -hmm. one of the reasons also, I remember four times during production, I tried to put a GoFundMe page, you know, because we were struggling so much with money. And I said, no, because we are too used to that and i said this mm-hmm. film has to be done with what we can get because at the end of it i don't want right. anybody right. 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 to take the excuse of oh well you need you had help you know mm-hmm. all those excuses of ah it's because it's just like oh she did a go fund me since i'm known in the country so they would have mm-hmm. those excuses of you know, you know, and so people g- gave you money, but if it's me, mm-hmm. na na na, that's why, clack, clack, clack. And I was like, you know what? This film is gonna, it's, and when I finished the film, I did not even have a salary for myself. I waited for a year. I almost went crazy during COVID because during COVID people forget I, when COVID first started, you know? I was like, oh my God, this film will never come out and I'm, and I'm going to go broke walking in Walmart or something, you know? And <laughs> because, because I had no money whatsoever and all the money that I had, I put it on the film. I had mm-hmm. nothing. I had nothing, nothing on my bank account. So when COVID, so because and we were on this race for Cannes 2020 mm-hmm. and, and when COVID hit and Cannes canceled, I'm like, oh, as we'll never be able to make it next year because it's going to be this year plus next year. You know, this so, year. Mm-hmm. And then it was that. They had almost 30 to 40% of 2020 
-hmm. you know, of submission of 2020 add mm -hmm. to what they, you know, what on 2021. And then they told us no guarantee. Like if you resubmit, no guarantee that you're going to be taken. So a bunch of, you know, a year of in, uh, uh, uncertainty. Of course, there's, I knew that if I was, you know, in a real big problem, I'll have people that will support me. Of course, I'm not alone, alone, alone. But mm -hmm. I didn't want this to be an excuse, especially for my peers in Haiti, you know, saying that, mm -hmm. oh, this happened because of that. I said, they cannot, they cannot say that I knew someone in Cannes because nobody knows someone in Cannes. This is not even it possible. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So all those excuses, I was thinking about everything, you know, that they could mm -hmm. use not to. And I said, right now, just make a film. Just make film. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for? You know, mm -hmm. what approval are you waiting for? You said As that Creole, should. you know, you said that Creole is a problem. Oh, hey, that isn't Creole. <laughs> so what's mm -hmm. the excuse now? You said yeah, there's no camera. Right. Oh, I don't have big teams. Well, I made the film with 90% of Haitian crew. I only had four or five experts on the film. All the rest was Haitian. Was like, what wow. is it now? Wow. You know, wow. what's your excuse? Wow. <laughs> the more... So I was, that's amazing. I, that's so that's so amazing. That is so. But amazing. it was important. It's also important. You see, mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. is also important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their money that it, we it, refused. It, 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 it teaches. It teaches not only the Haitian people who, that are working there as crew members that they mm -hmm. you, you can go in and make your own film. You can mm -hmm. go. You know, Why you not? formulate your own team and, and go make your own film. But it also allows you know for you know the international community to also see that okay like people are there and they are making films <laughs> that, yeah. is, you know, we're, we're just not just sitting, waiting for someone to come and, you know, give us a, a you know, a budget and a camera, you know, in essence. And, and so, they knew, they know the budget. We were the, the lowest budget of the fest of the Cannes Film Festival, of the official selection. We were the lowest. Wow. I don't, I don't think wow. any, any, anybody was even close to us. A low budget film in France is 1 million. We were mm -hmm. around 300,000. Like we, we were like, on the lowest that we could. And mm -hmm. most of this money mm -hmm. went to friends because I did post-production in friends. So, mm -hmm. so all this is, I never understand, to be honest. I'm sorry, I'm gonna judge, but I never understand when someone is on a project for five, four or five years. I said, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> like, we don't have like, we don't have forever to leave. Yeah, yeah. Is this have a film, okay, it's gonna be quirky. Some things is not gonna be, who cares? Like, who really cares? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. idea is you make a film to make space to make another one. And if you manage to, to succeed with the first one, then you get money, more money to do the second one, more time to write. If you don't manage to it, then you learn anything. There's nothing to, you cannot lose. You just cannot lose. It's just a mm -hmm. film. I, I remember even on set, sometimes I'll be so stressed, you know, going crazy. And then Fabiola was playing the mother. She'll come to me. She says, it's just a film. <laughs> yeah, I remember you said as hard, that. <laughs> as hard as it is, you know, to admit it, because there's money involved. There are people that trust you. There are goals that you have with the projects that you wish that you're gonna make a project, you know, um, professional enough to 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 get there. But it's it's just a film at the end of the day. It's just a you know? film. It's just a film. It's just that, a that, film. Yeah, that is that is that is you one know? of the most truth. It's one it of the most true facts. It's it so is true. true because because everything is as important as they are not everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's important because you put all the professionalism, everything that you have within you to make the best you can. But it's, mm -hmm. it's not important in terms of nobody's life depend on that, you know, and and you're going to leave that. But nobody knows, like you see this film that come out. An, an asteroid can hit you and they kill them. You know, and suddenly a film is the least thing anybody wants to think about. Like, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's, the, it's the pyramid of priority. Right now we have space, mm -hmm. mental space, and whatever space to put a film in, in, in as a priority. But whatever, if something happened, suddenly it's not anymore. So that's why everything is as important as they are not. Mm -hmm. So whatever you 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 want to do, there's no reason whatsoever not to do it. There's no reason why absolutely, not to fight. You know, I, I absolutely agree. You, you you just make it, and then it doesn't work. And then I made so many things before for that. You know, 
documentaries i was looking for myself i made a lot of short things that I, nobody knows about you know i just i'm i'm i, I said i want to be a director so i need to see how i look at things so i started to make mm -hmm. stuff to understand so anyway i talk a lot but it's it's <laughs> it's the idea you know the idea of yeah. just letting go it's hard it's hard because people are harsh people are harsh when you know when they find they space or attain you you know mm -hmm. um but it's up to you to build the strength the necessity you know the, the strength that you need to face all this because they're gonna be there anyway they're gonna be there right. anyway well said well whether said the, I, the, that is whether so the film true is, whether you can have like you think because coppola said that there's not still people that are like i don't see why he's so <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be there forever anyway anything you mm -hmm. it's gonna be there you know it's gonna be there sure. and and so uh it, what's 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 gonna be next for for jessica jenkins what what was he said yeah because the people want to know the people want to know more film the, the the one of the fight for this year since everybody has a goal every year <laughs> so let's say that the goal this year is to make the film access accessible accessible i'm streaming but wherever it has to be accessible cinemas now we are in uh, you know movie theaters and festivals we need to find distributors to make it accessible. This year, the film has to be accessible as soon as possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. But me, I need this to happen so I can just focus on writing my next project because this is what I want to do. I want to I wanna make a, my next film. Um, and, and it's a project that I've been thinking actually before Frida. Um, but I realized that Frida was the necessity of the moment more than this one. But right now I feel like, yeah, um, I can go there. And I can go there with more freedom and maybe more access to, you know, to more resources, finance resources to to go as crazy as it needs to go in this project. So right now it's that basically. It's just it's just to continue to make film. I want to produce also at some point. Um, I'm working toward that this year and, and next year to produce. Um, 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 I think I'm just gonna do that and be available for anyone who needs me in terms of, you know, because I, 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 I'm raising my hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's that's that's exactly what I want to do, you know. I think your movement make 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 the 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 image to stop. <laughs> I lost it. Yeah, I'm there. It's it's. There you go. You're back. You're it's back. it's it's the movement that make the movement. <laughs> yeah yeah it, but but it's just that actually it's just that because i enjoy it you know i enjoy diving in people's projects also as much as they need me because um and then we'll see you know part of it is people will come to you and ask you for things part of it is you initiating things to that you want to do it's you know it's this dialogue that that makes life so this is probably what my life would be forever actually you know and I'm 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 working toward having like a big production. I have my production company in Haiti, but it's it's very weak and and not strong enough because I can only produce my films so far. So I need to I'm working toward building something that is stronger and that is more independent. Um and then I'm working toward creating a center where where we become the kafu, if I can say it like that, you know, the, how do you say that? Um, half, half, uh, half, kafu. Half. What, what, how, how would you call kafu in English? Crossroad, you know, the crossroad. Oh, the, the crossroads, the, yeah, yeah. And the Caribbean, because uh, I remember someone very, very old, she's almost 100 years old uh, right now in Haiti. She said, we are the center of the culture in the Caribbean. And I'm like, this must be true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I think it is very true. I think I, I, said, I, I, I absolutely, yeah, that's it. That's exactly. very true. And I said, we need to create a space then for this, for this dialogue within the Caribbean mm -hmm. to happen, mm -hmm. you know, in our country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, create a center, create, a, create archives. Those are things that are really dear to my heart to, to document, you know, document us as a nation, as human. Um, as, as people, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I really want to do those are things yeah that I'm that I'm that I want I want to put my energy toward yeah mm -hmm. 
Well, Jessica, it's been so great talking to you. I mean, it, it it's great. It, it, it You're was, not even was, tired to listen to me. You were there at the screening. You had a long Q and A. Well, you know, it, I think I think as as a, as a Haitian director myself, you know, when mm -hmm. you know, like meeting you is like meeting. I feel like I met like a, another sister. You know, you know, comrade yes. and film, and, yes. and especially someone who is you know as successful as you have been with Frida. I think it's 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 you can it can only be beneficial to to you know meet and you know work together you know, on something so I you know I, I would never get tired I, I could just listen to, you, know, you talk about it all day so and we that's good will, for you because I, I talk a lot out. I probably will reach out as well and you know we'll probably you know talk about yes on that, on and then you're on my phone um um and that was lovely when I because uh, I always nowadays because of Frida I checked my my Instagram, even people that are follow, you know, where they put messages of people that you don't know. Mm -hmm. I check them because most of the time I found, you know, very interesting people or just people that are really curious mm -hmm. and that that, and then I'm happy that you know that I I got to to meet you and 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 we'll mm -hmm. see you know how this goes with like I tell yeah. like I told you, I'm here and and of course I'll I'll always be available in the limit of me as a human being also. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I cannot yeah, um, be as um, my performance will not al always be on top of what people expect, but I can do my best. I can I can do my best, like we all do. I think mm -hmm. if we all do our best, that can make it a huge can, difference. Yeah. And yes, so I was well, happy. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Jessica. It's been it's been great. Um, uh, you know, I, we'll definitely connect very very soon. And um, I, yeah. you know, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, you know, you too, um, you too. Pray, prayers for everything, and you know, we'll we'll, we'll stay connected. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um.